Hello, my name is Stephen Mayu, and this is my video series on practical JavaScript, where I walk you through the algorithm challenges at freecodecamp.com. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over the challenge confirm the ending. So let's take a look at uh, what we have to do. Uh, check if a string, which is going to be the first argument, ends with the given target string, which will be the second argument. So um, we see a test right here, confirm ending. The string is bastion, and the target is in. And this should return true because it ends with uh, this character right there. There. And uh, if you go ahead and look at the test that you have to pass, uh, it'll give you an idea of some of the strings that you have to do. So uh, if we had the string Connor and we pass it a target of n, it should return false because Connor does not end with the character n. Um, we have a string here. Okay, of a, a very long string, a big sentence, and uh, if the target is specification, well, guess what? Specification is nowhere near the end of that string, so it will also return false. Um, but here we have a sentence. He has to give me a new name. The target is name, and so it's going to return true. But wait a second. Uh, if we pass in the same sentence, he has to give me a name, and the target is me, M-E, well, this also has to pass because name uh, ends with M-E. So with that in mind, uh, let's jump right into our challenge. I've got my Atom editor open. I uh, went ahead and uh, edited my example HTML file to include uh, the JavaScript file, 7 underscore confirm underscore ending dot js and this is where we're going to write our function um, I'm going to call it function confirm ending and just get to work okay so function confirm ending and it needs two arguments so string and target and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just get my test set up Con console log all right confirm ending all right, and so the one that we saw was Bastion with the target of n. Let's do another one, console log, confirm ending. Okay, uh, he has to give me a new name. Okay, name. All right, so that one should pass. Do one uh, couple of more console log confirm ending. He has to give me a new. He has to give me a new name. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's pass in me. Okay. So these first three should um, should return true. And let me just do a false one, one that we know should will, uh, be false. Okay, so this long string and the target will be specification. All right, one more time, console log. Oops. Uh, what the heck? Oh goodness, okay, a very long string and specification. Okay. All right, so got that set up right here. Now, uh, first thing I want to do, um, uh, so it, it looks like, you know, if we if we matched, you know, just a single character to a single word, that would be rather easy. We could use the slice method, and, you know, we could say it's something like return target um, string, you know, slice, and, you know, negative one. Okay, and so it should definitely pass true for this one. For the other three, uh, I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up my JavaScript file, open up the uh, dev tools. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and refresh. All right, so uh, I know just by, you know, looking at the examples that the first three should pass and the fourth test should be false. Um, but I'm getting true and false and false and false. So, you know, this, although it's very simple and elegant, it's not really going to work with... Um, 
with you know word like you know multiple um, you know, multiple strings, uh, a string with multiple words, uh, or in this situation right here. So what I want to do is, before I make any kind of comparison, I want to uh, take the string and uh, and basically do what I did for the palindrome challenge. Uh, I want to just make it lowercase, remove all the punctuation and spaces, and then uh, that'll make it much easier to um, uh, to con, uh, confirm the ending. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So string, and remember all gold friend replace. Yes, you do. Okay, so I want the backslash W, capital W, and any underscore, and a G. So that will match all of the non-alphanumeric characters and replace it just with a blank. Um, I also want to just make it lowercase, just, just so we're just dealing with a long string of lowercase letters with no, with no special punctuation. Okay, so uh, we got right here um, our string and we're making it lowercase and removing all that punctuation. All right, the next thing I want to do, <clears throat> in order to use the slice method, um, we, we need to uh, give it a start, like a starting position. And uh, if we just use negative one, it's going to match um, the, last, um, the last character of the string. But if we have a target that's you know, bigger than one character, like name, it's four characters, and me, it's two, uh, we're going to have to determine like, the length of that and then make it a negative number. Uh, because remember, with the slice method, you have to use negative numbers to go to the end of the string. So I'm just going to create a variable starting start point, and I'm going to uh, just say, um, OK, target dot length. And uh, I can just, you know, multiply it by a negative number, and that'll make it negative. Uh, or, you know, I could even do something like this, like zero minus target length. It doesn't really matter. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to do the return. Um, and we're going to do a comparison, uh, uh, like, uh, expression in just a moment. So if the target triple equals... All right, uh, string and slice and start point. Okay, so basically it's going to make this um, comparison right here. Okay, target, and um, we're using a triple equal, so it's uh, this is a boolean. It's going to return a boolean, and um, it's going to be true or false, and it's going to return that to the console. So if the target equals um, the the uh, the basically um, we're getting the negative number for the starting index for the end of the string if uh, if it equals uh, the end of the string then it should return true otherwise false so I'm going to save this and we have um, three tests that should be true and the last one should be false okay whoops go over here Okay, and there we have it. This uh, passes the test. So we got a true, a true, a true, and a false right there. Um, I'm just going to show you one way just to uh, clean this up a little bit and just make it a, uh, you know, one line shorter. I like to keep things short. I'm just going to get rid of that start point variable, and I'm going to show you something cool. Okay, I'm going to say negative math, okay, which is a special kind of object in, in JavaScript, math that abs, which means absolute, and target dot length. So basically, um, math dot abs, it's going to take uh, any number, positive or, or negative, and it's going to just tell you its position away from zero. So if you gave it, um, you know, uh, let me just write it down here. If you gave, you know, math, ABS a position of seven, it's going to return seven. If you give it a math.abs of negative seven, it will also return seven. Uh, negative seven and positive seven, uh, they are exactly seven away from zero. So 
basically, uh, I, I want to do that, but I need a negative number to go to the end of the uh, of the string. So I'm just going to put a negative right here, and then it will return a negative number to me. So um, it should work exactly the same way. Uh, we're just getting rid of that starting point variable. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to why do I keep doing that? I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page, and sure enough, it works exactly the same. So uh, just to recap. Okay, we got our string and the target, um, and you know we have to you know consider all of the possible tests. So it, it's very easy just to test one character um, for one word, um, but when we have like a, a, a target with multiple characters like name or me, um, then things get tricky. So I just take the string. Uh, I lowercase it, remove all the spaces and punctuation, and then I use the slice method, and um, and I use a negative uh, value to go to the end of the string, and I use the length of the target uh, to make sure I'm starting in the right place. So, uh, for example, a name has a length of four. So if I do this string splice negative four. All right, one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So it's going to select exactly the last four um, uh, characters of this string. Um, and I'm just setting up a comparison with the triple equals. So if the target is exactly the same as uh, uh, the, the last, uh, you know, however many characters, um, it's going to return true or false. And I got this return statement here, so it will return whatever uh, this comparison throws at us. Okay, so uh, really simple, um, just another um, kind of a string related task, and we can use uh, just the slice method uh, to do that. Um, Free code camp. They also recommend it using uh, a similar function. Um, it, it's called uh, what's it called? It's called uh, dot substring. And I think I have some time to show you substring. Um, basically, well, one second. Okay, I got three minutes, so I have time to show you. So uh, substring. I got my notes open right here. And uh, I'm always looking up notes. So, yeah, so slice, okay, it uses the uh, start index, okay, and there's an optional end index. Um, so if you don't put a, an end uh, index like this, if it's just like this, it's going to go all the way to the end of the string. But if you put an ending right here, basically, um, the slice, it, that's going to be the start index with the end index in index, um, but it's not going to include it. It goes everything up until the end index. Okay, uh, but substring is actually okay. It looks like this. So we got a a string and an s uh, u b s t r. It's going to be the start and the length. Okay, so how far you want it to go, but um, you can you know, leave off the length and then it should do exactly the same thing just until the end. So, I mean, really, I can just say SBSTR for substring, save that, go to my page, refresh it, and I get exactly uh, the same thing right here. Um, so, so anyway, yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, if you have any questions or any comments uh, about my solutions, <coughs> excuse me, please write them in the comments below. And thank you very much for walking, watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye. Boop.